cool. Um, yeah. So I posted the workout, but I'll talk about it. Um, basically, we're doing single leg deadlifts. The rows um, will be one of those things where it's an option. So it adds a bit of complexity. Um, it adds a bit of weight and also a little more time standing on one leg. So it's a little bit of, so depending on the weight you've chosen, it might just be more balanced time. If it's a little heavier, the actual row itself is kind of hard. That's fine. Um, but we can often pull way more than we can single leg deadlift. So really it's just a cheeky way to add more time spending on standing on one leg, right? Followed by eight glute bridges. They're two footed. So these are just meant to open up the hips, feel it out. Still kind of get your butt to activate a little bit and followed by 12 per side sideline clamshells. Um, talk about what those are, but really kind of this lateral hip butt. Um, so we're kind of getting this back half of the body to kick in real hard. Um, the second half is going to be five times through 10 goblet squats. And I have two options. So 10 half kneeling, so I'm just taking a knee overhead press per side or hand release push-ups. And I'll show you both. Hand release push-ups, obviously, there's no equipment. Half kneeling is a vertical, you might wanna wait. So you'll have some options there. And 10 alternating happy stars, um, although not named after you, can be, although you might not be so happy about these <laughs> when you do them. Or I'm kind never of, happy when I'm doing it. I'm only no. happy after. Type two fun. It's type two fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible let's do it again that kind of thing um so we're just going to roll through these two parts but we're going to start with some cat cows so come on down to the ground there you go Tenish. so if you want to do more you can do two more and do less it's rare but you can do less After 10 or so, let's get into our bird dogs next. Arms or legs or both extending. Throw the toe down. Reach. Height of leg is not important, but you want to squeeze your butt on the leg lifted, so not overextending. Ten total. Left the Joseph leg. He was just sneaky. Bee. Was he just laying down the whole time Elizabeth was talking? Was Joseph just laying down and sleeping? No, he was eating breakfast. Oh, that's that's a very reasonable thing to do. Fair enough. Valid. After 10 bird dogs, we're gonna go ahead and have a seat. Um, if you guys, I realize you're in a tight space, so it's okay if you need to take turns or we can do something different, but we're going to be seated here, feet about shoulder width, drop your legs off to one side, and then switch. Just get a lean back, especially if you're going to little tight in the hips. Doing a total of 10. I will say you find, if you find yourself scooting forward or backwards, it's okay if you find yourself scooting towards someone if you do this. Um, a few inches so fine you can stay on your yoga mat if you need to okay. goal is to have a little bit of a gap between your heel and your knees just a little bit i think even be touching a little but we're not trying to overlap and it gets more advanced as you get more spread out but you don't need to go there if you don't want to this should feel pretty gentle i hope Nothing sharp or painful. Mm -hmm. 
once you have 10-ish of your hip rotations. We're gonna come up to kneeling or standing. We'll do arm circles. Again, enough room to move the arms. I'm gonna kneel because I can, but standing is fine. Thumbs up T-shape, start small. Gradually getting bigger. Once you have 10, come back to about 90 degrees. It's okay if you're a little bit lower. You need to go a little bit lower on the hands. Thumbs still pointed up. And rotations there. If you've done this before, order operation is not super important, um, just as long as you kind of hit all the shapes. I like to take a break and do the clicks or forward and back. So this is testing, can I lift up or pick my hands back without my shoulder collapsing forward? That's what we're looking for. Um, and here, go across, give yourself a little tap in the back. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and get thumbs pointed down and get this one. So directionally, pick one direction and then we'll do the opposite next. After 10, starting back at 90 degrees or slightly lower. Opposite direction where you started. You start to get a little necky, it's okay to kind of keep those circles on the smaller side. All right, let's go ahead and cover our glute bridges. So just kind of use it as a warm up. I know we're gonna do it later on. We're on our backs, one, 10 reps. Shins vertical, squeeze your butt, come back. Keeping those toes and heels down. Hands can do whatever they need to do. Okay, while we're on the ground, let's kind of cover the sideline clamshells. We've done these ages ago, so we'll review them again. If you have a band, those little exercise bands you put around the knees, I don't happen to own one, but they're a great way to add a little difficulty. Sideline, so hence the name, we're sideline. Um, it's okay for my hips to be back. So when I go and bring my hips through, they're towards my wrist, that's fine. My shoulders over my elbow, hands flat, and as I come up, this knee might just pop up for me, that's okay. I'm pushing down with the bottom leg, in this case, left leg. So in this case, when we're doing 12 per side, we'll do less, just to practice. We'll do three to four, and drive, and pushing down with the left leg, and back. This hand can go on the waist. We wanna keep this shoulder over our bottom shoulder, so no rotation forward, um, or hand up. Whatever you like to do with this top arm, point. You're going to squeeze your butt, send your hips through. And we're going to do three to four per side. This knee comes up, that's fine. Let that come up. If it stays together, that's okay too. It's really about the bottom leg here. Practicing a few reps, three to four. And then we're going to switch. Pretty simple. Or roll over, turn around. That's fine too. So hands, so shoulder over the elbow. You can stack that, same thing. We'll be doing 12 of these per side shortly. So there's that. So kind of planting seeds. We're gonna kind of fast forward a little bit. We're gonna talk about a few things we're gonna review again. 
on the second portion of this, but I want to make sure we're all in a good starting position. So we have the alternating, well, so happy stars or alternating V ups, same thing. I think happy stars sound less aggressive. Um, but we need to start with a hollow hold to start. And a hollow hold just means we're kind of tucked, the pelvis and shoulders are tucked up. The head is typically up for this. Um, and the length you reach out is up to you. So oftentimes if you look at hollow hold, you're gonna see something like this, right? Um, very gymnasty. That could be pretty aggressive. My low back is on the ground, it needs to be. So in some cases, I actually have to start, they'll start, and they're almost their dead bug. And they tuck, and then from there, tuck the knees in and chest up. And this is a decent starting position. My low back's on the ground. I'm slightly flexed. My head's up. We can make this more complex by bringing the hands up, legs out. But as soon as I lose this contact, that's where I want to come back in and make it less complex. So what I want to do is a 10 second hollow position hold. So whether you're fully extended or you need to bring it in, right? That's going to be your default position starting. It's the inverse of a Superman, right? If you feel like you're starting to lose, lose the low back and the hip flexors kick in, you'll know. Bring the knee or hands in and then I'll make it less complicated. After 10 seconds, you can take a break. Okay. So that's kind of your hollow position, right? Sort of the inverse of your swimming position in a lot of ways. Um, we're gonna now gonna go ahead and reach. So when we do the happy stars or the V-ups, um, the goal is to lift up the shoulder, not lift up the feet, okay? Which we'll go over shortly, but we'll make sure we feel good about that. Last thing we're gonna cover is the hand release push-up. This is one we've done in the past, but again, I'll go over it again. The hand release itself is not a huge amount and you can even use your knees to come out of the push-up. So we're gonna come back to that plank shape. Okay. And as I come down my push-up, all right, I'm gonna come down all the way down to the ground. So my butt squeeze and we brace here. So it's okay my thighs touch, but I'm not in, you know, I'm active, I'm flexing. I'm gonna lift up my hands just a little. And then I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze, press back up, which can be quite hard. So if I need to, and when I'm doing volume, I tend to plank down, lift up the hands, drop the knees, and come back up, which is perfectly fine. Um, let's try three reps. The hand release can be itty bitty. If ex this shoulder extension is not great, maybe we're practicing just to push up. We're elevating that push up. Just a little, yeah. Should be able to slide a business card underneath your hand. Just sort of tiniest lift. Okay. So that's your hand release push up. That is one of your options today, but it's a way to make a push up more challenging. So you have to stay, you have to stay stable and supported the whole thing. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> There's a discussion happening here. <laughs> We're good? Okay, it's all right. It's okay if you need to, I can't hear you. I just can see discussions. Um, let's kind of, let's go back to the beginning. We're doing eight single leg deadlifts with a row per side. So with that, your foot can be lifted or not. I'll show you from the waist down here. I have my kettlebell. Dumbbell will work here too. I like to have on the opposite of my working leg. I'm either going to lift the leg or not. So send my hip back. The row part is this where I pull the elbow back towards the hip and I come back standing. That's one. If I wanted to go foot down. I could do the same thing. Back, row, Stand. Either way, all right, we're doing our eight per side single leg deadlifts with a row, depending on the weight of that kettlebell. So if you need to go a little heavier on the bell, keep that foot down. A little lighter, higher skill, lift the foot up. So we're going to row when we're, our chest is forward and our leg is back. Beautiful. Good. 
you'll probably recognize it if a side you're better you're better at. I would recommend, not required, starting on the more wobbly side, if you know whatever side that is. Excellent. And it's okay if your weights don't touch the ground. I know you both have probably pretty big kettlebells um, and they might touch the ground. But if they don't, that's okay. That's right. Not the range of motion isn't inherently the weight or kettlebell on the floor. So there's that. Once you've done your eight per side, you're going to follow by eight glute bridges, two footed, not single. Again, just activating your glutes, waking them up. And then 12 per side, sideline clamshells. That's one round. We're in a total of four. Can you recap that? Absolutely. So you just eight per side, right? On the deadlift? Yeah. The okay. So the glute bridges, that's three lay down, squeeze your butt. We're doing two feet this time. So just so even. 12 glute bridges and then 12 clamshells per side. Sorry, eight glute bridges. Eight glute bridges, 12 clamshells per side. Correct. Yeah. Eight single leg deadlifts. Um, yes. So eight single leg deadlifts in a row. What was I say? In like sorry, eight and sorry, the row part, not in a row. And a row per side, eight glute bridges, two foot two footed, and twelve per side on the sideline clamshells. Got it. Four times three. Thank you. Correct. You're welcome. Yep. And you're you're either in round one or just about. We're going to do our glue bridges next. Go. One more nuance, but the closer your feet are to your butt in a glute bridge, the more quaddy it gets. Farther away, somewhere in the middle is your glutes. And then as the shin angle starts to come like this, we're getting more hamstring. So if you're feeling it more in any one spot, you can buy something else. Okay, the sideline clamshells, we're doing 12 per side. The top leg, yeah, just kind of comes up. This is, I doubt it, but for anyone this causes knee pain for, lateral or out, right, outside knee pain, um, we can just do a side plank hold or a plank hold as a substitution. Yeah, just a little. Roll over, turn around, whatever you need to do. Pressing my bottom leg into the floor and setting my hip forward so it lines up with your shoulder. Like anyone with the exercise band could put around the tops of their knees and that adds a little more tension, but if you don't have one, that's okay. And if you do have one, be careful with the tension. If you have the option, go with something light to start. Knees and your hips back. Nice.
There you go. Nice job. So we're finishing round two. We're starting round three. On the delicate, the chest up, a little more extension on the back. I feel like you're rounding forward. Nice. Opposite side. Excellent. Is that four? Is that three? That's fine. Three to four. It's fine if it wasn't exact. It's close enough. I'll take it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a break. We'll recover a little bit. Um, this second portion of the session is going to be the five times through or kind of well I think we'll have plenty of time about 20 minutes remaining so I think we'll be okay but if we hit 20 minutes we'll stop at 20 minutes um so five times through 
10 goblet squats. Again, kind of carrying your weight. Um, kettlebell, it's a little weird. Carry how we like. I like the sideways, but that's just me. Um, we have a dumbbell. Maybe we're carrying it. If it's a little bigger, sometimes carrying it on the head makes more sense. Or kind of like this. Um, but keeping it in front of you while squatting. If you like to squat to something, grab your box, your chair, whatever you like. Um, the second movement we have is 10 per side half kneeling overhead press. So the half kneeling part is really just taking any. This is your half kneeling, okay? Um, how wide you go, you can kick this foot in, whatever you'd like. The overhead press part is the one where if you have your kettlebell, it's going to be in kind of this corner where you kind of reach for the corner and then you can have your palm open or not. That's up to you. Um, but my grip is pretty loose. So it can be closer to the shoulder joint or closer to the sternum. Both are fine. And you're going to press overhead. Um, I have my left leg forward. So the weight's in my right hand, but you're welcome to do the opposite. Um, if you have a dumbbell, same idea, right? Heads, the, it's on the shoulder, pressing overhead. Um, I tend to switch legs while I switch arms. So I'd switch my right leg forward and put this into my left hand, All right? So it's kind of up to you, but I would, when you switch hands, switch legs. Um, so it's that or hand release push-ups. It's not an and. So if you prefer to go lower equipment, a horizontal push, we're doing 10 hand release push-ups. If you'd like to do overhead pressing in this plane, then we're gonna do the half kneeling, 10 per side. And finally, we have the alternating happy stars or V-ups. So this is one where we're back to that hollow shape. We're gonna stay flat here this time. And our scaled, well actually the full version, so alternating would be right hand, left foot. You can bend the knee if you're not flexible, that's fine. All right, so it's about lifting here as opposed to touching your toes, okay? Um, if you need to, you can bend the knee and just come to like, a, like a sitting position first, right? Instead of reaching up. And of course our V up, I'm not sure if you can do one. Let's see if you do one. Yeah, sort of, not great, right? But you get the idea. We're kind of flexing into this shape. Um, so that's two-footed. Your legs are a little bit heavier. So you're welcome to do either version, okay? But the alternating every time you lift a leg, that's what. Well. Okay. Um, for anyone who has neck, or back issues, we don't like flexing, we can go back to this guy. So up, same side or opposites, right? A great alternate just substitution if we don't like flexing and rounding the spine. Um, if there are no questions, it's okay if there are, please ask. Um, everything is 10, so no confusions. We're going goblet squats, either half kneeling overhead press or hand release push-ups, and 10 alternating happy stars or V-ups, five total rounds. Start when you're ready, basically. Um, if you're doing this at home on your own, don't exceed 20 minutes. Um, resting as you need per movement or between movements. There you go.
you're probably bending your knees a little bit of space. If you want the leg, you're not working, just bring that foot down. Like you're going to have, so if you're lifting up your right hand, touching your left foot, you can put your right foot down on the ground. Yeah, there you go. So you don't have to fully stay flexed the whole time. In which case, maybe do five per side. Keep it simple. I will say if you have a weight options, I know not everyone does, you can squat, typically squat way more than you can overhead press. So I would say squat heavier, have a heavier weight for your squats, have a potentially lighter weight for your overhead press, if that's something you can, you have the, the luxury of doing. Nice on the half kneeling overhead press. You can gently squeeze your butt. Yeah, I think I just lifting the more like lifting the shoulders and the torso, the leg will kind of by default come with beautiful. Yeah. Go ahead and bias the arm reach versus the leg lift, and it'll kind of come together in the middle. Yeah, beautiful. Yep.
Nice squats. Go. Nice job. Exactly. Yep. Just thinking about that arm reach or shoulder lift versus that leg lift. So you can tell if Joseph is laying down or if he's not there, but if you can extend your legs, you're welcome to straighten your legs out. Oh, he's there. <laughs> Sorry. <Good. laughs> I see signs of life. Nice. Extended rest is fine. We'll submit. <laughs> Just laying down. That's fine. No need to get up for any time soon. Um, so that took about 10 minutes or so, right? Depending on how heavy you're getting, obviously, you might have to take a little longer. Um, but 20 minutes is plenty. If you're taking 20, in fact, that might be a bit, a bit too much, um, depending on what's going on. So use a bit of common sense when doing this. But we're going to go ahead and spend the next, let's say, five or so minutes, making a little longer if you'd like, um, just doing either opposite movements, right? So opening up the chest, kind of more extension-based stuff, um, as well as a bit of recovery, um, if there's any, and kind of a little prehab. So we're going to recover a bit, and then we have a couple options here. We can either do... Um, we can either do kind of more of a yoga approach, um, which I'm sure Joseph is very familiar with, um, or we can make this more of like a shoulder activation piece. So kind of more, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but let's just kind of start with shoulders, just upper back stuff. So let's just start with our yoga piece first. Um, Find a little space, um, if you can, let's go ahead and we're gonna lay down and just either get kind of a little bit of a butt squeeze, gently raise the hip, the shoulders, or maybe the elbows, maybe on the elbows. You can go up a little higher, you can go a little higher. My butt is squeezed the whole time. You need to oscillate back and forth. Push that five times. A little chest up, mostly. Keep your shoulders tired from me, all those push ups. Our, we're going to follow this with our. What shape are these? I'm just going to demonstrate because I can't think of a better way to describe them. So, toes together, head down. You're going to raise, keep the shoulders back, lift up the hands. We're going to skim the floor. W, I can't reach above my head because I have a couch, but if you can, Y, if you can, you're going to make an I shape, and then back. So W, Y, bring those hands in if you can. Repeat that for 10. Keep 
keeping your shoulder and pec in line with each other or shoulder behind the pec. How do we do this with our head? Yeah, the head stays down on the on the mat or the ground if you can. That's kind of your, I would say, PT. Boobs too or, big to keep head down. What is? My boobs too big to keep head That's down. Fair. If you need it, all joking aside, if you want, like, going in the future, a pillow, I get it. I mean, I think I do, in theory. <laughs> I mean, if we're keeping the head up a little, that's totally fine. Mostly that can be pushed a little necky, kind of intense on the head. Excellent. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of give our hips a little bit of, a little uh, hips and butt, just kind of this whole, this whole system. So we're going to kind of go from no equipment to maybe a foam roller or a ball. So for anyone with any of those things, otherwise a bit of floor space will do the trick. Um, we have our good old fashioned figure four. So this can be unseated where... I cross my leg over. Um, I could be like physically on my couch if I need to, right? And the closer I get my foot to my butt, the more of a stretch I get. If I want to lean back, like, you know, it's not enough. I got this. I'm going to reach through this gap, my little figure four, through my legs, and bring my knee to my chest. Right. If you want a little more of a, I would say a mobility or foam rolly thing, you're gonna find your foam roller, same thing, find that side. Come on, it's my short, short, you're gonna lean on to the side here, cross my leg over, and roll around. You go a little more generally, but in kind of lateral hit. Right? So that's a kind of a a different approach. Um both are fine, by the way. You can do this with a ball as well. Um, I would just say if you're gonna use a ball for this. Consider size. The smaller your ball is, think like golf ball, lacrosse ball. That's pretty acute. You get into like softball territory. That's fine. And texture. How hard is it? Um, if it's hard, that might be a bit aggressive. So just a just a thought. Um, and then when we do our hips or anytime we do anything, we're going to do the opposite side. So we kind of did the lateral slash back. We're gonna go for the front. So a lot of times when we go for stretching out the hip or the hip flexors, we're actually going, I go for the quad. It's a little easier to do. So we can either take this, again, back to our half kneeling, um, and either just from the side, this bottom leg, squeeze my butt. If I extend the hip, maybe I lean forward. All right, that lean forward's optional. Um, if you can barely squeeze your butt, that's basically your stretch. Um, that's more of your stretch approach. You, of course, do both sides. The other option, of course, is the foam roller, right? So kind of where we have, again, I have short ones. So I'm going to go one leg at a time. This is off to one side. My other leg is just kind of, I'm just kicking out to the side here, kind of holding myself up. And I have my, go ahead, just kind of rolling up and down, side to side. If you find yourself limited on space or the foam roller, just roll it down farther and you can get a little bit the whole leg. If this is feeling pretty good, like I've got this part, go ahead and squeeze your butt. So my left leg, and then I'm going to go ahead and bend my knee. That makes it challenging already. I might stay here, but I feel good. I might go side to side. It's pretty gross. Um, interesting. But if I can breathe in through my nose and not through my mouth, it's always a good sign. So it's so before you bend the knee, should you choose, um, squeeze your butt before you bend that knee and it might not get to 90. Another fun one. I know you have some bigger kettlebells at home for you too. If you're feeling lazy, grab your kettlebell and, uh, just stick it on your leg. <laughs> it's a pretty easy way to get some input or you can go more the handle. Right, so you can kind of be creative about how you compress the tissues. Um, 
but your bigger kettlebells can kind of sit on your quads. And when you do this, you can breathe in, flex, and then back down. So this is kind of a passive way to do this, All right? So, but again, as long as you're breathing, it's a good sign. Okay, that is, well, I'll say that's not our time. We have two minutes. Um, I'm happy to hang out if you have any questions or life updates, love to hear them. Otherwise, I'll give you two extra minutes on your day. I apologize for being a little, little behind. Um, but there we are. How was that? It was good. Yeah. You did catch Joseph and I little spat. That That's nice. okay. <laughs> she says she does. She does that push up position frequently. So I said, then why don't you do it without your knee? Yeah, taking advice. Yeah, I'm getting workout advice from Nikki and vice versa. I stopped coaching him a long time ago. For this, <laughs> um, he would be in my classes, and I'd be like, "Hey, I need you know." All athletes go to the bars and he'd be like standing there like Nikki, I need you. Can you pretend to listen to me? I mean, you just 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 pretend. <laughs> you can't boss me around. <laughs> and I was like, then you need to not show up to my classes because <laughs> you make me look bad. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, well, it's a good thing we like biking is biking we can do together without him being like, Can you coach me? Yeah. No, I've already done this this week. Coach yourself. <laughs> Um, have a lovely rest of your day. And you too. Who doesn't have a spat? It happens to the best of us. I'm more concerned when people don't fight, when they're like, oh, we never fight. I'm like, then what are you repressing? Because <laughs> there are bigger problems. That's where I'm a little more concerned. So you're a robot. <laughs> that or it's gonna it's going to implode or it's gonna need to survive. It's one of the two. And I'd prefer to get it out, but that's just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um okay. If we do positions that you're already pretty familiar with or you do a lot, you'd be like, hey, I already do that a lot. And we can change it up. So don't feel like- No, I was having no issue doing push-ups from my knees. I wasn't having an issue with it. <laughs> the hand release is hard. The hand release is one of those like, because you're basically fully, I mean, almost fully relaxed, you almost have to like reactivate. And that's pretty difficult to do. I kind of like it because it's kind of like that- um... It's almost like a like a Superman in the middle, almost. Yeah, you have a little bit yeah. of extension on the shoulders. So the shoulder goes yeah. from here to like slightly here. Um, yeah. that's it's if you can do it, it's great. Um, it also gets super tricep heavy, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it is one of those things where anyone with like shoulder issues, that extra range of motion just might not be there, right? Um, and that's totally fine. But it's a little more challenging, and it makes push ups if you're like already nailing them, pretty challenging as well. So. <laughs> It's it's convenient, but also very easily scaled down back to <laughs> push up. But there you go. I'm glad you like them though. And it's a totally fine to use the knees. Um, especially <laughs> coming all the way up because that's just hard. Right? Regardless. Yeah. <laughs> Forget what Joseph said. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> what, what does he know? <laughs> um have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you next week. All right, see you next week. Bye. Thank you.